Hello there, I'm Nick, and I'm doing something I don't normally do on my channel, but I've been way too excited to talk about not just one, but two Sonic trailers, both of which in their own ways brought me back things I have desperately missed from this franchise and have also shown us some much needed confidence on the checkered path going forward for the Hedgehog. Thought it might be fun to take a look at both, so let's take out the old analysis machine and... Oh, that's right, the old analysis machine quit because it was overworked and not paid enough. Anyway, go check out Good Vibes Gaming for no reason whatsoever. Oh well, guess I gotta do it myself, but don't you worry, I will remain unbiased as I thoroughly examine everything and oh my god, it's <laughs> There is little crap! <laughs> Is that a Metal Tails? Did they finally give him a robot? Why is he wearing a... Oh my god, it's a... Oh, it's a skirt. It's a skirt. That's for Metal... It's for Metal Amy. And there are clowns? Metal clowns? And the jack-o'-lantern. I love the little jack-o'-lantern. Oh, look, there's my beautiful little cherry. And who's that Bonnie-looking son of... Is that a Mecca Fields? They brought it... <laughs> Oh my god, I hope that's a turtle. Oh, got some dreadnought energy going on hard there. Oh, metal snappy turtle. I lost my mind when I saw this, and I have not bothered to track it down. You might think I'm just playing it up. Obviously, I have seen this trailer before, but this is just how I react every single time I watch it. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. This is everything I've ever wanted. I don't care if more metals makes Metal Sonic less special. He's already a robot cop. So technically, by that logic, Metal Sonic makes Sonic less special, and already I don't care because we already had four different Sonic robots in the first handful of games. Have you seen my channel? This is not the place to complain about that. I am here for this. And I cannot believe how much has changed since I dropped that Metal Knuckles video just a couple years ago. I've never been so happy seeing a video of mine age badly. Back then, we didn't even have art for this character along with a Metal Tails and a Metal Amy. If I could find any complaint, I suppose you could say this was an unceremonious reveal for these new robots, but I don't care. Because with them, this game also gives us some really cool multiplayer options, which is incredible. I've never been excited for multiplayer in the classic Sonic games, something Sega always obsessed over in the 90s and always failed to deliver. But finally, it feels like Superstar is going spin balls out for this. Expanding that multi-screen, which was only ever half-baked in the original games, it actually looks like a lot of fun here. And the four-player co-op in the main game looks fun. They're doing the new Super Mario Bros. thing and just pulling the camera back. Finally, nobody has to be bummed out because they have to play Tails. And this new battle mode looks like a lot of fun, and these robots are so much cooler than those stupid Sonic droids from Colors. No, they're not going to get a full Mecha March Madness video, maybe a YouTube short. I'm probably lying. Either way, I'll talk about them. Anyway, not only are they bringing in the bots, but they let you customize them, swapping out different pieces and, oh, changing colors. I guess this game might be bringing a certain debate to an end. And not just that one, I also noticed they named a level Lagoon City. Very clever, Sega. Now be courageous and make it one word. Yeah, I know, I'm mostly talking about the robots here. What did you expect from me? You better believe I will make a dedicated video on Metal Tails and Metal Amy, and I hope legitimately I have enough to say about these other designs, because I really like them. I like that creepy clown, I like the jack-o'-lantern, I really hope that angry jaw face is a turtle. Even if it's just a skin, there's gonna be a Metal Turtle video, that's just gonna happen. I don't care if anybody watches it, that's for me. And yeah, I'm sorry, like the pumpkin and the clown, I love carnival and Halloween themes in my video games, what can I tell you? And, oh, that'd actually be a fun idea to revisit, give us a proper Halloween classic level. Haven't seen one of those since, what, Shadow the Hedgehog? And you know what, whatever else about that game, the level themes went hard, and I miss that. But anyway, yeah, it looks like these custom parts are something you obtain during the game, as we see at the end of this trailer that we're getting, oh my god, we're getting a playable Sonic 2 Mecha Sonic, but it calls this Mech Parts. And I do have to wonder how you go about obtaining them. I really hope it's a little bit more detailed than just microtransactions. Not a big fan of those, but I will tell you, Sega, 
Sega, this is the way to do a digital deluxe version. This looks way better than what Origins was providing. Anyway, for the robots, while I was freaking out about this on Twitter, Scurvy Pirate Hog presented a really cool idea. What if you have to fight the robotic version of whatever character you're playing as during the game? I think it'd be a lot of fun to earn the mech parts from defeating them. I mean, what if these robots were all mini bosses in the game at some point? That'd be awesome. I might be getting a bit too greedy there and let's stay greedy. Some other things I would love to see in this mode, obviously I would love some Freedom Fighter skins because that's all they ever need to be, just an occasional little acknowledgement. And again, if you're gonna tell me to let that go, you're on the wrong channel, baby. And while I'm at it, let's make some more fans mad. I would love to see a classic Shadow. Yes, I know canon is important, lore is important, these characters are important, who are you talking to here? But hey, I also like to have fun. I'd like to see some fun variations on the characters. It doesn't have to be a part of the canon. Who cares? Just have some fun. Give me modern Sonic skin. Give me Sonic Sprite skin. And while I don't expect any of that at all, to be a little bit more reasonable, I don't think it's out of line to ask for the Tails doll or the actual Mecha Sonic people think of when they say the name Mecha Sonic. These robots right here tell me this game was not kidding about that superstar's name. And I want Sega to fully lean into it. It's not the only time they've used superstars. So heck, why not? Bring in other Sega properties that make Knight's cameo in every single Sonic thing ever. Bring in one of the monkeys or the car from Daytona USA. If it could work in a fighting game, it can work here. But seriously, at the very least, give us the Tails doll. That gives us the cast for Sonic R in a proper platforming game. That is wild. That is all I ever wanted from that game since the 90s and Superstars is giving that to me. Yes, I know the Egg Robo is not here, but who cares? <laughs> I've seen enough of that stupid thing. Now, I also understand that these little robots will not automatically make this game good. The gameplay and level design really matter, but it looks like Sega is really confident with this one. They've been showing it off all over the place since they first announced it. Everybody who's been hands-on with it has positive things to say. I'll be honest, considering the development team behind it, I'm not expecting them to hit it out of the park. They never have in any other game beforehand. But hey, I would like to explore their gaming library, so if that's something you'd like to see on the channel, let me know, because... Um, Oh god, that's right. Regardless, I've got a lot of confidence in this one. I'll be surprised if it plays better than Mania, but we are getting something both familiar and different, and I think that's how you have to do Classic Sonic, because there's a difference between nostalgia and staying on brand. And you can be both. Yes, Green Hill is back, but the game is not relying on Green Hill. It's just a multiplayer map, and it's finally using something outside of the Generations assets. I mean, maybe the 3DS ones, but hey, I will take that over the the same crap I've seen for a decade now. It's fine. This is how it should be utilized if you're not going to use it in like a 3D open world or something like that. Either bring it back with something new to say about it, or just leave it as a fun little extra for an extra mode of the game. Another example, Metal Sonic is probably back somewhere, but we have not seen any of that robot hog. This trailer shows us Metal Tails and Metal Knuckles, all while bringing in a clever toyetic mechanic that lets you personalize your own robot, expanding on the one good idea from Sonic Forces. And that's what I mean. You got nostalgia in bringing in some obscure characters like Metal Knuckles while building on those ideas with Metal Tails and also expanding with the customization. Something old and something new. Yes, we understand that Metal Sonic is the basis for these designs. Yes, we understand that Green Hill is the basis for this bridge zone and you can see the carnival and casino elements, but these are basic Sonic elements. That's what you need classic Sonic 4. Taking this particular line of games that gives us all these familiar things using designs that helped establish the goodwill for the brand back in the 90s, but also expanding on all of these ideas. All while bringing in some of the more obscure lost elements and giving them some time to shine. And speaking of, wouldn't hate if they brought back Hypersonic either. That's been such confusing messaging from Sega. They brought in Hyper Tails and then removed Hyper Tails, and that was a big thing I missed while I was whining about about Hyper Amy. I think that makes like three of my videos outdated or misinformed, kind of useless. My bad. It's no secret that Azuka is not a fan of using the Hyper Forms, and all of this mess with Origins just further confirms that for me, but at the same time, they allowed a new form for Sonic in Prime, and then they go and release the trailer for the final update for Sonic Frontiers, and give us what the fan base has dubbed Super Sonic 2. But hey, if you're gonna call it anything, you should probably call it Super Kaioken.
Titan Sonic, because it's clearly a combination of two different techniques, not just an elevation of one transformation. That might make no sense to you if you haven't seen Dragon Ball Z, but if you love these super forms and you haven't seen it, go watch it. You're going to have a great time, I promise you. And obviously, this is more Super Saiyan than ever, thanks to these cyan eyes. And of course, I immediately thought of my green-eyed Super Sonic from the classic games, which obviously look even more like Super Saiyan Goku. So bringing in a cooler color definitely gave me those vibes. And while it might not seem like much, there is a bit more going on here. We see Super Sonic let out a surge of that corrupted energy, and after it bursts out of him, his eyes glow blue, the same as it does in the main game. So that means he's combining his cyberspace abilities with his super form. That dark energy showing that he's conquered the corruption and can now fully utilize these powers. That is really cool and very Dragon Ball. And I, again, am very much here for it. At this point, it's just anime tropes. It's fine. Let Sonic be anime in fun ways. Again, it's been no secret that Sonic Team is reluctant to use the hyper forms, and this, like a lot of other things, feels like something of a compromise. But again, I will take it. It's nice to see them loosen up a bit and have some fun. Super Sonic is well and fine, but you can't just reuse it over and over again in this game and then give us, well, the ending they gave us. But clearly, this DLC is looking to fix that exact problem, which is interesting because before this point, everyone was mostly excited about the extra playable characters, but this trailer is largely focused on the confrontation between Super Sonic and the Supreme Titan, which obviously they're teasing an upgraded form for as well. But the rest of the cast is also here, letting us know that they will be involved near the end of the game, which I'm so happy for. And as other people have noticed, it looks like Sage has her new shoes on that we saw in that cute little bit of artwork. I think everybody has been most most excited about this final DLC and I gotta give him credit it is kind of cool that we are hyped about blue contacts letting us know that yes they've heard us and we're in for what I assume will be a kick-ass finale that said I do have to wonder just how these other characters are going to play I know there are leaks out there I've not looked into them please be polite to your other viewers don't post any crap in the comments let people be excited let me be excited <laughs> just going off the trailers I do have to wonder how these guys are going to play. I'm specifically concerned about the traversal. It's a Sonic game after all. How they move around is what matters most. And I think showing them off here in this trailer is indicating that they will be playable in the open world. But be it cyberspace, be it the islands themselves, a lot of the challenges are extremely linear. A lot of springs and rails all up in the sky. And that means that they're not going to be able to deviate too much from that core boost gameplay. And let's be realistic here. If they started development for this stuff since the game released, that's not a lot of time for them to get really wild and crazy with the mechanics. They're not going to be able to veer too far off from the core design of the original game. So I'm going to keep my expectations in check. But all of that is okay. This DLC has been addressing a lot of issues and adding quite a bit more than most people have been expecting. And I certainly did not expect a trailer at Gamescom for a free DLC update of a Sonic game. That's that's the other thing. This is all free. That's pretty awesome. Yes, I do agree with everybody else. I was one of the first to say it. After playing the original game, they're clearly just giving us the rest of the game. They should have given Frontiers more time to cook in the oven. And yes, it does suck that a lot of modern games release unfinished, only to sort themselves out post-launch, which is especially concerning for a single-player game. You could see a lot of the cracks and limited budget in the original release of Frontiers, but despite that, it remains remained a fun time, and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I'm all that mad about it. I'm excited for this update. I'm happy to see that they went back and tried to bring in more for this game. That tells me they believe in it. I have to imagine they had to fight for whatever time and money they got for this project. They didn't have to do any of that. They could have left the game as is, and you'd still have left a lot of Sonic fans very happy. It's really hard for me to remain all that upset about it when, yeah, all of this was good and hopefully they learn the right lessons with the next game and they give us
give us an even more polished experience. And hey, this is far from the first time they've released an unpolished Sonic game. At least this one is going in and getting refined. Sonic 06 sure as hell could have used that treatment. It's frustrating that every single Sonic game that's come out in recent years has had a desperate need for polish. But they are starting to do better than Colors Ultimate. And while I have my problems with Origins, I'm still happy that they're taking feedback and polishing that sucker up. And Frontiers is looking to wrap things up strong. And yeah, I'm here for it. Will this be a problem if they continue to release games like this? 100%. You can only do this so many times. Quality control has always been a problem, and they need to improve upon that every time something releases. But for right now, I got more robot clones and a new super form all in one day. The very things I ramble on about constantly on this channel. So yeah, you better believe I am incredibly excited. I do, of course, understand that all of it is superficial. Superstars could still be bad. Frontier's final DLC could be lackluster. But like I keep saying, I was not expecting a whole lot for either game, and I'm already impressed with what I see. It looks like Sega is finally setting up this franchise the way a lot of us were expecting them to all the way back in 2017. Playing it a bit more safe and celebrating the iconography of the original Genesis games with traditional 2D games, while using the classic Sonic designs to represent that pillar of the brand, while getting a bit more ambitious with the storytelling and gameplay with the 3D games. Again, I do appreciate stories and characters, but I'm not super worried about them being different characters or the same character at different points in their life. I'm just happy to see them continuing to be a bit bold and having some semblance of a plan here. I'm happy to see modern Sonic being utilized in bold new ways. I'm happy to see classic Sonic still around and still expanding on those old ideas. I'm psyched to see obscure characters return. I'm psyched to meet new ones. And no, while every little thing is not perfect for me, they've given me a lot, but still use a certain chipmunk, but not everything's for me. Yes, there can still be more, and yes, I do think they have the ability to provide more, but there's something for everybody. And I'm personally excited for what is here, and I'm excited to see them cater to different branches of the fan base while remaining inviting to newcomers. And yes, by newcomers, I mean children. That's when you start liking Sonic. And these kids get to grow up with whatever version of the hedgehog suits them best. They have so much variety, so many different ways to have fun and engage with this great character in this super fun world. Who knows, maybe they'll grow up to be better behaved than the rest of us. Keep thinking back to everything I've been whining about or suggesting on this channel for the last few years, thinking specifically of that postmodern Sonic video, and I did understand that it takes time to make these games and release them, but yeah, there was a little while there, it seemed a little confusing. Why weren't we getting a Mania 2? We had no idea what they were going to do with Modern Sonic after Forces. Heck, we still haven't seen a racing game since Team Sonic Racing, which is a shame. Sumo releases some incredible games, and I still have way more fun with Transform than I do with any Mario Kart. And while I wouldn't say any of this is top tier, must play, must watch, must read art, a lot of it is really solid. And I expect us Sonic fans will have a lot to be happy about these upcoming months. But hey, we will see just how well those particular opinions age. But that is going to do it for today, guys. I've got some other videos I really want to get out the door, so I'm going to get back to work on those. And hey, if you would like even more analysis on these trailers, be sure you check out Sunset City. It's a weekly Sonic podcast I do with my friends. I will have a link to the channel in the description. You can also find it on your favorite podcast service. Yes, I am finally updating the audio side of a podcast. I know, I'm really bad with stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I like to keep things a little bit more evergreen, but if you had fun with this video and you want me to do more dedicated opinion pieces on upcoming Sonic media or anything like that, let me know. Always good to get some feedback. And hey, if you want to support the channel, I do, of course, have a Patreon, all that fun stuff. Whatever the case, thank you for sitting down with me today and let me talk at you about a blue hedgehog. And of course, I want to give an extra special thanks to the patrons who support the channel. Thank you guys so, so much. And let me laser focus on these folks here. Kyle Winter, Cirrus the Skeptic, Joseph Duncan Sonic 2 Blue, John, Josh Strider, Hatsworth, Tiny Jericho, Ginger Bob. Macy, you're not in this list. What did you do, dude? Anyway, Jack of All Spades, Tristan Trap, Meekers, Dun Dun, Quote, Resident Fanboy, Miles the Prower, Jeremy Singer, Mr. Boo J. Oh, I almost forgot. It's Macy's birthday. Happy birthday, man. Sam Webster, Fish Flop, Lucas Lipker, The Bad Pal, Jonathan 
Jonathan Dobbs, Clover Chats, Haley, is Sonic Team making you blue? Dimps leaving you dumb? Big red button giving you a big red headache? Try Sonic the Chronic. Well done, SP. Seas of the Glade, The Dark Neon, Stefan Placanica, Three Monic, Graham J. Hall, Lenny X, Wayne is boss. I already see another long one coming up. God damn it. Lederick. We truly do live in a grim crisis, but thankfully we have Nick the Game Apologist to get us through these hard times, so let's 20 his covers Coriate. Oh my god. Jimmy Duke STR, The Lumberjack, NBTV, Trash Baphomet, Autumn from Twitter.com. That Pyromane is 21 years old now. Happy birthday, Pyro. Jin Seotome, Bowden. I'm not reading that. Enerjack5, Grayson Conagher, Spades the Nocturne, Ken K, Ven101, Paxton Bisbee, Sindarin7, Haru Specs, Twilord. The previous person is selling pictures of their weenus. <laughs> Paisley, Eric Delgado, Kodinsky, Sayonara Robocop, Crimson Rose, Nyx, Sonic P, A, J, Municent, Roxas the Cat, Godzilla, Makuda of Salt, Insert a Car, Alexander Watson, Neil Gampa, Conan Kudo, Sharif Pai, The Lex, the most powerful ship in the two universes. I will need that explained to me at some point, Lex. Native Nerd 27, Kaido Prower, Swift Cannon, Spearmint, Omega Man 21, Pen Adelaide, Other Envelope, Jamie Torres Jr., The Phantomist, Silver Stars, Daza S, The World's Most Unironic, Eight and a Half Tail Stan, One More Sonic Robot, and Dr. Squawkle. <laughs> I love that name. Thank you again, guys, for all of your support. And oh my god, March is going to be crazy next year. But until next time, I'll catch you all later. Toot toot, Sonic Warriors. Toot toot.